You are listening to the Bow Hunter Planet Podcast, Season 6. The podcast is supported by Scent Crusher, Scent Off Game On, Tinks, Cat Work Truck, Victory Archery, Thorn Broadheads, Shadow Hunter Blinds, Cobra Archery, Burris, HHA Sports and HHA USA, Reveal Cellular Cameras, and Deer Cam Coffee. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the Bowhunter Plant Podcast Season 6. It's unbelievable, Tim, right? Season six. Kick off show for season six. I, I I don't know where the times went, man. I don't know where these last 11 years have went. And I don't know where the first five seasons of this went. But uh, I know. I'm looking forward to where season six is going and kicking it off today with our special guests here. Yes, yes. Chris from HHA. <laughs> How are you, man? It's been a while. Good. I didn't realize we were going to be the kickoff episode. I guess we got we got special royalty coming our way or something, huh? That's right. That's right. You get a you get a piece of Hershey's candy. We'll take yeah. it. We'll take it. We'll mail that. <laughs> It'll be frozen when it gets here. I like frozen yeah. chocolate. And uh Sam from uh Chase Nation. How are you, man? Good. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. So you guys, so here's the thing. So Chris and I have been talking for a while and about this special project you guys have been working on, which is one of the reasons we wanted this to be one of the first episodes we did this year, because you guys are launching this coming up and this project, it's, it's a very humble thing to work on. It takes, it it has a lot to do with our veterans and it's super important. So I'm gonna let you guys talk about, but I just wanted to say, thanks for doing it. Number one, I think it's going to be an incredible series. I'm so excited about it. And we are so happy to, promote and show this thing off it's going to be really exciting so i don't know which one you guys want to go first but i'll let you guys tell us what you're doing and and what's coming go go ahead chris all right well yeah um i guess i'll start just with sam and i I think we we partnered back in the summer of 2020 was it not yeah because last year i think was your second year at warren's yeah so summer of 2020 something like yeah, that so, so, summer of 2020 we, we do an archery shoot at warren's wisconsin which for people that aren't familiar with the geography here it's it's a stone's throw from the matthews uh factory so cranberry country and sam and his team came and uh i, I think i hand delivered your hha sites to you guys that morning if i remember right and you uh yeah up on the range and uh you were <laughs> flinging arrows with us an hour later so um, yeah, we did the uh, 3D course an hour after uh, you put the site in my hands. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had been shooting HHA for a long time. I've been shooting the optimizer. That was the first time putting a Tetra on my bow. Um, yeah, we just we upgraded you to the latest and greatest, and that's kind of how our relationship started. And then uh, um, I think I, I immediately, obviously, started telling you about what we were doing with our vet shoots. That's why you came there that day. Yeah, and, uh, and then fast forward to last May um david wooten who is the the primary subject of our first film uh had contacted me in january it's almost almost a year to the date that we're talking now through our military discount and just had a very powerful story um about his time in uh, in the service um his resulting ptsd and how archery had changed his life and it just it really impacted me and and that weekend in warren's you know last may really kind of shifted my focus on HHA USA kind of not totally away from honor flight. We're still going to support them, but it, it really drove home the fact of what happens when you put a bow and arrow in a veteran's hand. And uh, I mean, you brought five or six of your guys up with their cameras and it was a powerful, powerful weekend um, changed your life. Yeah. And, and this project was born out of it. <laughs> uh, I've told this to countless people, but I mean, I've been in the archery industry for my entire life. And this is, this is hands down the the most awesome project that I've ever been involved in. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, Chris and I were on the phone and uh, we were talking about plans for the, for the year, you know, and some objective planning and, and then Chris had the idea. Uh, I mean, this is something that he's been doing for a little, a little bit, but but bringing me in um, and letting me capture it from behind the camera. And then, um, 
you know, edited into a, into a film was um, a really, really awesome ask uh, to be on the receiving end of. Um, and of course, I wasn't going to turn it down. And uh, as Chris said, you know, none of the guys on my team were about to uh, stay home. Um, they, they all wanted to be a part of it. And if they weren't running a camera, they were there just supporting they were doing the shoot. Uh, they were talking to the guys and they were in the background, you know, behind the scenes, helping with lighting and helping with audio and this, that, and the other thing. And it was, it was really an awesome event. Um, I'll tell you what, one, one of the things that, you know, when I get to talking about what went into making this film, um, we didn't just interview one person. Uh, David Wooten is the, is the one that's featured in Mission 22, the film that we put together. Um, but we did interview several um, veterans um, and get to hear their stories. And one of the things that I took away from that is, you know, these, these stories that they tell, um, there is like an unwritten rule amongst, um, amongst our military. And that is, uh, you know, you, you just, you never share uh, war stories. Um, and, you know, whether that's because you know, you're not trying to compare to the next person's story. You don't want to make yours sound harder than the others. Um, or if it's just because, uh, you know, you, you just don't want to relive some of those, uh, some of the horrific details behind some of those stories. Um, whichever the case may be, the, the individuals that we sat down with us and let us film with them shared some stories that only a few years have heard uh, since they happened and uh and being on the receiving end and being behind the camera you know um you don't just walk away from that and forget it um it it it's it's not so much just about putting together a, a film and thinking about the entertainment piece as it is you walk away from it with a completely to put it this way you you go in i went into it having a, an immense appreciation for the military um, I left that that night uh, with a whole nother level of respect that I don't think that the average civilian can comprehend um, unless they have heard, you know, or had some sort of an experience with our our uh, our veterans or active military um, and got some firsthand knowledge of just what what they go through. You know, we see it in movies all the time and, and we, you know, you. You, you hear about like you know, giving respect to our soldiers, but boy, oh boy, when you hear some of these stories and you know what they lived through and, and it's beyond just uh, one graphic story that might've been a part of their uh, experience. Um, you know, it, it, it could be just like breathing the air or like in the, uh, in the camps, there's like, I forgot what they call it, but it's like a big stew pot. They'd have to stir and it's, it's all their feces that they have to burn. And some of those guys come home and they develop cancer from it. Um, you know, <clears throat> I don't know. I, not only did my respect for military go up in, immensely, but I, I uh, live with the stories that I heard. Um, and sometimes, you know, I think to myself, it almost, you know, these, some of these things that I've, I've, I've heard these guys spell out for me, these, these, details emerging from their memories of uh, horrific stories that happened while they were while they were serving overseas um <clears throat> they they don't go away and i think that's a important detail to bring up because i think when people watch this film and they watch and listen to david wooten talk you through the steps of his life and through the story uh that he shares you know it it's heavy it hits heavy but like when you sit before a man and you hear it come right out of his mouth and, and you're just a few steps away from him, uh, you really become attached to that story and it lives with you too. And it's like, I, I'm not going to say that I have some PTSD from hearing the stories, but some of the stuff that I heard, I wish I, I didn't hear if I'm honest. Um, that's a really hard part about making this film, a like really hard part about making this film. But it, it's honor. Like I feel honored that I'm able to be one of the people that was selected to be behind the camera and document this. You know, so um, I wouldn't even know. I'm telling you that it's hard to to live with hearing some of those stories. I wouldn't. I wouldn't turn it down. 
and I haven't turned it down. And we're, we're filming new stories right now uh, for the next couple of films that are coming up in this series. Yeah, it's, it's, it's heavy. So, it's intense. I mean, just listening to you, you know, what, what, and listening to how you're talking about the people that you guys have interviewed and talked to and um, had on camera to produce this film that you guys are talking about. I mean, I can't help but think about the courage from their standpoint and not, not necessarily just the courage that they had to go through what they went through, but the yeah. courage that they have to have in order to be able and want to share that with you guys and everybody else for the making of this. I mean, that's, that's quite an amazing thing to know. And uh, I mean, really powerful statement, man. Absolutely. Yeah. So, no, but never, no one ever thinks of the camera guy. <laughs> so I totally understand no. where you're coming from when no. you hear that story or, Chris, or those stories, you know. You know, Chris has a relationship with a lot of these guys. In fact, everybody that I've had a chance to be introduced to is through Chris, of course. And so he's heard a lot of these stories, um, you know, firsthand. And, and, you know, a couple of people have asked, like, the same kind of question has come up a few times that this conversation has been had. And it's, it's, uh, you know, how did you get these guys to, you know, talk about this? Like, you, you know, you just brought it up. How do you, how do you get these guys to talk about this openly on camera, you know, be recorded, you know, if, if it's that we don't, you know, the unwritten rule that, you know, soldiers don't share their war stories is holds up or holds true. Then why are these guys sharing it? And, um, you know, one thing Chris did was he put me in contact with these guys um, ahead of time. We were in communications months before meeting in May when we went to that Warren's uh, shoot, you know, through HHA USA. Um, and we talked about it. And I, and I got on the phone with each and every one of them and heard, you know, bits and pieces of their stories directly over the phone. And I asked the hard questions. Are you sure that, you know, when this when we sit down to record you're okay sharing these details and more. And every one of them said, yeah. And I said, sometimes, you know, I can imagine when you're telling a story like this, you know, emotions, even though you guys are soldiers and you're, you know, strong guys and you're, you know, the ones that we all want to hide behind when trouble comes our way, you know, if emotion comes and, and, you know, makes your eyes sweat, are you going to be able to withstand that and keep recording? And are you okay showing you know, that side of your emotion. And everybody was very much um, an absolutely yes. And the, uh, the fact of the matter is, is every one of these guys, well, what you find out when you start to talk to our, our military and, and our veterans, uh, the same is they're as selfless as it gets. Um, and I mean, selfless. And you think about what they're doing when they go to war. I mean, they're, they're putting themselves out there to protect our freedom, right, and, and others, right? So they're, we know that they're selfless and they're heroic that way, but it also, you know, the true colors come out when they're willing to share those stories so they can remind other soldiers that are burying them deep in their souls that they're not alone, um, that there's other other people, big, strong guys just like them that have horrific things that they've gone through in life. And and um, they don't need to go come out and tell their stories, but they need to know that there's a brotherhood and a sisterhood of, of, of individuals out there that have been through something uh, that affects them in a similar way and that there is an outlet. And one of those outlets is something that Chris is a huge proponent of, and that's archery and outdoors, you know. Um, well, I, I was asked a question uh, when I was down at the Badlands Film Fest. We submitted this film, and 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 it and it was featured in the Badlands Film Fest down at the ATA in Kentucky this year. We were down there for that airing, and it was it was a really uh, neat experience. Um, afterwards, we were taking photos and whatnot. And somebody came up to me and asked me, um, you know, a few questions about about the. Uh, you know, the whole process of what it was like, you know, filming these guys. And I really appreciated getting the chance to talk about that before you said, you know, you don't really talk too much or you don't really think about the, the guys behind the, the lens. When you watch something on TV, you watch who's in front of it. And that's kind of where it ends. That was really a neat experience to talk about it. But 
um, I just, I just kept going back to this one story that strikes my mind. And it, and it wasn't even, I mean, we did capture it on film, but it didn't even make the mission 22 film. And that was when uh, Badlands had sent Chris a, a bunch of uh, gifts to um, give away to some of these veterans that traveled in to uh, participate in the event for the weekend. And Chris, you know, gathered everybody around and these guys were standing in a big uh, huddle circle um, in the gravel parking lot at that Warren Sportsman's Club. And uh, he started, you know, he kind of went through, you know, a, a brief introduction as to where the gifts were coming from and why he was giving away and letting these guys know what a, a special place you know, um, their service holds in his heart. And uh, when he started handing these packages out, like bino harnesses and, and whatnot, I think every single person, Chris, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, but everybody you gave it to turned and gave it to the guy next to him or looked for somebody that didn't have one because they wanted to give it away. And that selfless nature is just unreal. I mean, I just, I always go back to that story uh, because it was such a neat, thing to bear witness to you remember that chris oh yeah i remember it like it was yesterday i mean it's there there's a there's a very unique fraternity within our veteran and active duty military and and you and i have been welcomed into that even though we're civilians we didn't serve these guys aren't dumb and the only reason i say guys is because we have yet to have any any female veterans in our circle but i mean that's going to happen at some point but i mean um they they instantly see our our hearts for them and i mean are we going to cure ptsd no we're, we're not but, but we're going to do everything that we can until we go into the ground to try and do that and they see that and, and i mean david wooten i've only known him for a year but i feel like i've known him for 20 um ryan lonergan another guy that we met that's going to be you know in one of our films i mean yes. every one of these guys it's just it's an instant bond that you form with them and they're just they, they welcome you into their to their community and it's 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 humbling and it's it's so special to be to be a part of and to be able to come alongside them and and I mean I say this all the time on my podcast and in phone conversations you know I didn't serve but I'm I'm proud to serve those that served us and to do everything that I can to to help them out through the sport of archery amen yeah for sure man it's hard to imagine um that selflessness that you're talking about, right? Because we, we, we sit here and, and your day to day, you know, driving to work, going home, you know, all that kind of stuff. You don't see that often. Yeah. Right. And, and to see a group of men and women that have made that a core of who they are is, is dramatic for a dramatic difference than what you see in regular life. Right. Which is huge. Um, so I, I had a question. Um, <laughs> when you guys were sitting down talking about this, what did you guys envision as your as your goal? Like, what did what do you want people to get out of this? Sam, you want to, you want me to take that one first? Well, I mean, it's up to you. I could speak all day long about it, but it, you, it's your baby. I think you should speak to it first. I mean, my goal, and I don't I. I, I say this in all confidence, this is not a bold statement, but this, this project is going to save people's lives, plain and simple. I mean, when you, when you see this first film and hear of the impact that putting a bow and arrow in David Wooten's hand had on his life, it, it literally saved his life. He credits a pastor with putting a bow and arrow in his hand as him still walking this earth today. Yep. And so there's, there's somebody out there there's a lot of somebody's, there's a lot of David Wooten's out there that are going to see this film and then the ones to follow that are going to be in a really, really dark place. And this film is going to touch them and they're going to go, maybe the, maybe, maybe the nine millimeters, not the way to go. Maybe I'm going to go get myself a bow and see if I can get myself right. I, I think I know that's going to happen. I, I guarantee it's going to happen. So that, that was my heart behind it. That was why we did it. That's why we're doing it. Yeah. And uh, I want to weigh in on that, too, and say that, you know, um, another question that popped up down at Badlands at the Film Fest was, um, so I, this person came up and said, so I love the idea that, you know, archery and outdoors is helping get, you know, this soldier through PTSD. But can you really look me in the eye and tell me if, 
he was pretty straightforward. Can you really look me in the eye and tell me that that's going to save his life, that that's going to be his cure for life? Or is it going to be a temporary thing? Eventually that's got to wear out. Right. And I'm like, you know what? I came prepared to answer that question because it's already been asked. Um, and, and one perfect example, if you take David Wooten, for example, um, here's a guy who, you know, and by the way, PTSD, what I'm learning about it is that it comes out in different, you know, colors. It, it comes out in different shapes and forms. It's not the same for everybody. Um, for David Wooten, it's, and, and he's very transparent about it. It's, it's one of the things, not all of it, but not, you know, not in a nutshell, but just one of the things that gets to him um, is traffic. You know, here's a guy who didn't have a problem necessarily with traffic. And then he suffers from PTSD. And now little things like traffic get on his nerves and it can ruin his day. It can take a, a good day and make it bad. And then when that, you know, um, trigger happens on the way home from somewhere, like he runs to the store and he's driving home and somebody cuts him off and really, you know, puts a dent in his day, he takes it hard and he walks in and, and that could be like the nightmare for the family. You know, daddy's in a bad mood. My husband's in a bad mood. So then everybody's in a bad mood. So what does David do? He grabs his bow, which is hanging right inside of the door by the door. And he just, he doesn't even go into the house. He just reaches in, grabs his bow, and he shoots his 25-yard target along the side of the house. He shoots for about 20 or 30 minutes, and then he sets his bow down and goes in, and he's perfectly fine. That is his, that's his answer, and he can do that for the rest of his life. Something pisses him off, and he comes home, rather than taking it out on the family and, you know, always having to say, you know, it's PTSD or whatever, he can wear it off outside shooting his bow. That'll never go away. And so that in a nutshell was the answer. But, but, you know, I, I, I know for a fact that if I've been asked that question more than once, it's going to be wondered by somebody, you know, listening to this or after they watch that film. So I figure, med, you know, might as well just bring it up now. Cause that's, that's, the, that's the uh, long and short of it, of, of how uh, putting a bow in somebody's hand can save their life. And, 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 and make them a happier person. And you know? that's a lot. There's a lot there. That's real powerful, actually. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're, you're always going to have skeptics and I mean, maybe it's not archery. Yeah. Maybe somebody's going to watch this film. And they're going to go, well, I'm not an archery guy, but I could get on a paddleboard or maybe I'll start biking or I'll start running. I mean, Sam, sure. I, I haven't even had the opportunity to yeah. tell you about this guy yet, but we've got another, not to make comparisons, but I think we've got another david wooten caliber story on our hands from a gentleman that i met through uh through a friend of mine that, that's actually part of the badlands staff and i mean he's an amputee um and i just wow. recorded the first half of a podcast with him on monday that it it gives me goosebumps just talking about it and he, yeah. he i sent him the film he's 100 percent on board so he's uh hopefully going to make it up to wisconsin this summer and he's going to be the subject of a film next year so i mean there's there's so many of these selfless veterans out there that want to share their story. I mean, it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. highly respectable that they, they put a uniform on for four years, 10 years, 20 years, but even when they take it off, they still want to serve. And those are the kind of people that are gravitating towards HHA USA and wanting to help the, you know, the current and the future generations of our veterans. Yeah. What, 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 what Chris just said to, um, they, these guys, just to clarify, they, it's not that they want to just be on a film. It's not at all their purpose. You find out exactly what I mean when you listen to these guys talk. They genuinely, like, you know, Chris keeps saying the word serve. They genuinely want to put themselves out there for the sole purpose of helping others. And that is plain and simple. It is absolutely challenging for these guys to talk through these stories. Um, as the one that's been sitting there getting them to talk and asking the leading questions and getting them to share some of the details and, and expand on it further to capture that on film. I'm witnessing firsthand from these guys. They, it's not that they want to relive this stuff. It's friggin' hard. Um, but they genuinely are selfless enough that they know, they understand the purpose. 
and they're willing to do it for that reason. And, and I think in a sense, it also maybe uh, it's kind of like airing the laundry, right? It's like you get your story out there. You, that unwritten rule, keep going back to it. Of we don't, we don't share war stories. Well, damn. I mean, that's hard. I imagine it's got to be terrible to live with. So in a certain respect, being able to just share it might be a release. Uh, I know for David, it is. That's, that's part of his therapy. Besides archery and outdoors, he, 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 he tells his story, not just for this film, but he's told it um, many times. And, and, it's, and it's helpful for him. You know, I, right now, um, Chris introduced me to a gentleman named Chad Stillman. That's, that's going to be the next film that we, that we launch. And, uh, and Chad's not a military veteran, but he's a first responder. Um, he's got a, a, like four different attributes to his title, uh, but he's now retired from law enforcement. Um, and he, and I won't go into his story. You'll have to watch that film when it comes out, but I, you know, David, you know, we talked about it, I think on the phone, the first time we had a chance to, to, to talk I told you I was on the way to go meet a guy and we were going to film we were going to go on a hunt and we were going to film this story didn't I didn't I tell you about that on the phone yeah I believe so so um man we we went on a hunt we filmed it it was awesome we had, saw like 35 deer um that was that was fantastic go back to his place and we record the story we go down in his basement and he starts telling, he's got his wife and two little girls upstairs and girls are old enough to understand now they're, you know, early teens. Um, and I just remember like when he'd hear a creak on the floor, like it was getting close to the top of the stairs, he would start talking quieter or he would stop and listen, you know, cause he didn't want them to have to hear that wow. story again. They know how much it hurts. Um, and I felt that. And that was, mm. That was yeah, really intense. That was it was it was uh it, powerful. It was really I don't know. There's a um excuse me th to start that film as a uh, radio transmission. Uh, you got to hear it. Uh, yeah. That was that was the last call he made before he retired. That's and, incredible. Uh, <clears throat> wow. it, it, it's powerful. A little bit surreal, like the way you guys are talking about it, but in a strange way, exciting because I want to see this stuff. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. it's yeah. going to be really a, the, just the way you guys are talking about. It, I can, I can, I can feel the, yeah. the camaraderie that, that exists there. I can, you know, and, and the, the depth of, somebody's soul just kind of bleeding out into that film which is absolutely awesome how many um how many series do you, you guys are calling them series right that's what you're calling them i would just call it a series, series a film series okay yeah, we, we how many are even, you launching we haven't even discussed the uh the the subsequent because because the mission 22 just to give people a little history behind that so my my heart for veterans kind of started with the Honor Flight Network, which I know I've talked to you guys about before. And anytime I went on an Honor Flight, some of these pictures hanging behind me are, are the collages of the Honor Flights that I've either been on or sponsored through HHA USA. And they, they put a mission number on those. So, you know, Flight 35 was Mission 35. Um, so when I started up our shoot series, I, I stole that idea from them. So, you know, 2020, we put on eight shoots. It was Mission 1 through 8. Last year was 9 through 16. This year we're doing six more. Um, and that's going to be 17 through 23. We're not going to have a mission 22 shoot. And one of my volunteers called me out on that last summer when, when we were talking about our shoots coming up for 2022. And, and before he even had to explain himself, I knew why we were skipping 22 is because, and that was before the film even came into, into the picture. We just decided we were going to go right from 21 to 23, because we're going to, we're going to recognize, you know, those 22 a day that take their lives. And we're just, we're going to, we're going to do that. I don't want to say in honor of them, but just to, just to put that number out there and to recognize that. So people, people put eyeballs on it. Yeah. And so then when Sam and I got talking about the film, it's like, it just made sense. It's like, 
mission 22. I mean, that is, that, that is the mission that we are always going to be on when, when, yeah. when shoot, when shoot number 16 is over. Hey, it was awesome. We had a great weekend. We had 150 shooters. We raised five grand high fives, but, but mission 22 is never going to end. That's something that we're always going to be doing. So um, I guess we'll have to figure out what we're going to do for subtitles on like, you know, maybe it's chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, whatever. But um, the, the plan is at least right now, um, yeah. Uh, is to do two more films this year so the the chad stillman film will release actually at warren's we're gonna we're gonna advance preview that for anybody that comes to that shoot on that saturday which is may may 14th yeah the first first night of our first shoot and then uh we're actually partnering with white tails unlimited to do a banquet here in wisconsin rapids to kind of end our season so hopefully we have you know two three hundred attendees at that and that is where uh i guess we'll call it chapter three uh, but the the third film will debut at that in front of a, a crowd of 250 or 300 attendees at a Whitetails slash HHA USA banquet. So awesome! That's really so, cool. I was. Um, <clears throat> go ahead, Dave. <laughs> I don't know where you are. So I was gonna say. Uh, so I, I so Tim and I both have a background in video editing and video production. Tim's got actually a lot longer than me, but some of the things I've worked on over time have been personal things I've done. Um, and Sam, this relates to what you're doing in a, in a little bit of a sense. I, I started this, um, family biography tree of video production, uh, filming elderly people in my family about their lives. And so I started filming these things, um, years back now when I started BHP, I mean, cause I started learning how to actually film things and, uh, you know, but some of those stories were like World War II stories and, you know, Vietnam, things like that. So, and then, so what I would do is I'd film them and I wouldn't touch the footage again until these pr people passed away. So if I filmed something six years prior, I'd pull out the footage and go through that footage. And then I have to pair up that footage with, you know, the family wants these, this music and, you know, all these photos of the person. So <laughs> I guess what I'm getting to is like, the editing production of that like took a lot out of me. And I remember feeling like, you know, it was like so sad to watch these films, right. And try and rewatching these things. But the thing about that people don't really understand a lot about production part of it is there's two pieces to it. There's number one, you got to film it. And there's, I mean, there's a lot to the filming. I'm just saying like, you have to ask the right questions. You have to get in the mindset with these people to make sure you're getting out of them everything that you can to help sure. the production and help this amazing piece. But at the same time, then you have to later go back and edit this and put it all together, which can be very, you know, like I said, from the videos I did, it was, it pulled a lot out of me doing those videos and mainly because I had, you know, attachments to these people, but you're obviously building those attachments when you sit down with them and film them and you're getting into their minds of what happened, you know? Yeah. So hats off, man. That's all I'm saying. I, I understand the pressure there. So it's yeah. not, that's not easy. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's um, that is a challenging aspect of that uh, of, of this whole thing. Um, you know, when 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 you're doing a storytelling or a storyteller's sort of a documentary style film, um, everybody's listening intently to every single word, and they hang on to it, right? <clears throat> when you have um, like the David Wooten story, we trimmed down forty five minutes to five minutes. Uh, for this film wow. the, the total film is 10 minutes long there's five minutes with david wooten and then chris is in there too for five minutes but we we took 45 minutes of storytelling and <laughs> condensed it to five minutes what that means is we're blading those clips we detach the audio and then we have to cut it out right and then you have to overlap it so you can transition seamlessly from you know one audio bit to the next without making that white noise transition sound that can you know be distracting um i believe that is uh that is probably one of the hardest parts about you know putting a film like this together it it's it's something i don't think anybody ever thinks about but you definitely think about it as a viewer if you're watching something that's put together kind of messy do you understand what i mean yeah, if it's Blair Witch Project, you're you're uh, moving around in your in your seat the whole time, going, "I can't watch this." <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and like that. so so that was that was one part, and then and then the other thing is, 
is we had uh, four different cameras rolling for David Wooten's story. And um, I was I was all over my guys to make sure that, you know, our settings were identical. So we had the same lighting. Our white balance was the same. You know, everything was was perfect. So they they would look the same from one clip to the next. So you wouldn't be able to tell. Oh, he's going to a different camera. What kind of camera is that? Or does he have a lens filter on? No, is yeah, Or you can tell that was a cut that they redid yeah. or, you know, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Right. Um, so, but the one thing I didn't do a good job of, when, and you wouldn't know this when you watch it, but it was making sure that their audio levels were good. Um, because even though I, I had, you know, David was mic'd, so I have one main audio file, right? Um, that's only with one video file, right. but then I got these other three cameras that, um, you know, one guy had, uh, a shotgun mic in there and he, and his shotgun mic was off, but he had it plugged into the camera. So we weren't receiving any sound at all. Right. And then one of oh, them was just, oh. you know, raw <laughs> audio coming into the, to the, to the camera and, and you can hear it, but you really got to turn it up quite a bit because he was a little bit far away from David when he was talking. So yeah. my point is, is you have to take all four of these uh, video files and overlap them. And then you have to like put them perfect so that, you know, when David starts to speak, you can cut to any one of those four cameras and it's not like a, <laughs> a lag time or something. That was yeah. a challenge because of the length of the, uh, yeah. of, of David's story being 45 minutes, you know, I, and I tell you guys, I say press record and don't stop recording because yes. it is so challenging for me to, you have like one of the guys, <laughs> and I won't name names, but he, he hit record like six times. So I have like six video files <laughs> Of one no. 45 minute story, and I'm trying to no. search for you know the parts. Yeah, resync are, them. Holy smokes, is that tough? But uh, it, it, I know it, exactly it was, what you're um, talking about, though. Yeah. Without the video, without the audio waves, yeah. it's real literally the worst thing in the world to try to put that with your audio because now you have to go off lip mute movement or. Yeah. <laughs> but those yeah. waves help a little bit because at least you got all one peak. You can put it there, cut it, and then take to your one. You know, but you know those clipboards, right? The, the 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 movies use to start their film. Yeah. yeah. Oh god. I, people don't think about it, but that is that is actually highly important. It's a visual and mm -hmm. it's yeah. an audio cue where they can cue their audio off mm -hmm. of that initial noise. Clip. And well, uh, it, you know, it it makes it, if you don't have that, and Dave and I are both testaments to it. Um, trying to match audio to visual yeah. is yeah. nearly impossible unless you have certain cues to work off of. You so. can see this thing here. I see. Yeah. Yeah. This is an audio split. This is a um, linear recorder, and I can record multiple channels of audio through this thing. I don't use it anymore, but you put two SD cards in here and say you bring in like two audio channels or four audio channels. Um, they would all record. Um, on different like files files yeah uh, the problem is is that when you're using something like this you don't have any audio on your actual video file so the video file is completely quiet yep. so what we would do when we used to use that is a clap you know yep. and then if you're out hunting we used to have to do like a little like sound or like a you know so we knew <laughs> <laughs> it was that's such awesome. a pain yep. no that's that's absolutely true man it, there's a lot that goes into it for sure but Tim, you know it speaks to the quality that you guys are going to be putting out which is awesome and i know your background is uh pretty in depth with all of that stuff um yep. where so i want to i want to talk just real quick about um where people can watch this where, where are we going to be able to where mm -hmm. can i go and go find this film oh. Um, and Chris and I talked about that a little bit today, this morning. Um, for sure, we're going to launch this on the Chase Nation YouTube channel. So Chase Nation TV's YouTube channel, it will be streaming there. Um, I'm working with Carbon TV. Hopefully, they'll put the film up on that platform. They already host three of our, video, our film series up on Carbon TV. I'm really hoping that they'll um, plug this one in as well. Um, I'm not sure how we're going to work that, but 
it'll be figured out. Um, I also have a streaming platform that we air our show on called KOTV on Roku. I'm going to have them put this on our channel on Roku. And then I know from Chase Nation and my personal page on social media channels, both IGTV and Facebook, going to stream it there. And I believe Chris and um, several other partners of HHA are going to be streaming it as well. You know, this isn't to this isn't to build any sort of revenue stream. This is purely we just want it to get seen so it can help somebody. So yeah. it absolutely doesn't matter to us where it's seen as long as it gets seen. Well, and that that was actually going to be part of my follow up question is that this is not this is about people seeing it right the right people have to see it at the right time and without sharing it and resharing it and sharing it again you're not going to be able to have that happen right so right for those that are watching go find <laughs> it share it you don't yeah. know the person that's scrolling through facebook or wherever you're going to share that to might yeah. be scrolling scrolling through Facebook at the darkest time of their life, run across that. And to Chris's point, man, this is about saving lives. So, you know, go out there and do that for sure. I want um, to make mention on our YouTube channel, this won't be monetized. So you won't have any commercials. Again, I really want to stress that point. It really makes no difference to us where you go and watch it. Um, nobody's going to earn a penny off of it. So it's just a matter of get it seen and share it with as many people as you as you can for the point you just made because you never know whose life it might touch absolutely there, there is truly no way that i could have met chad stillman the guy i was talking about i just recorded with um and ever had an inkling of what kind of past he comes from the guy is very well spoken He's got a great sense of humor and he seems like happy go lucky. You'd never know that he battles demons internally ever. He just, he, he really harbors it in. Uh, but damn, I mean, the guy, the guy needed an outlet and archery was a saving grace. Um, you know, I, and, and, and truly I believe based on what Chad told me, his relationship that he's, he's formed with Chris has really uh, come to fruition helping him, you know, therapeutically. So it's, and it's, it's not just Chris, it's just that the outlet, you know, the reminder that something like HHA USA, I'll, I'll use it again, um, exists, you know, it's, it's a nonprofit organization that gets first responders and military veterans and civilians together in one place at one time to just unite and be friends for a day or two and shoot the bows and and shoot the bolt. I, I, I think it's really, really darn cool. I want. Can I just say one thing because I know we're probably going to wrap up, but I don't want to forget this. Mm -hmm. This is important. One person that we are uh, are going to be recording with eventually. His name is Kyle Wicker, and Kyle um, is a military veteran um, who I've uh, was first acquainted with. Um, spent time fishing with him on a boat. We we even recorded a. Um, a Great Lakes salmon fishing video together once. Um, super nice guy. I knew he served, but I didn't know he he suffered from PTSD and it and it spilled out once. Um, and I put him in touch with both Chris and David Wooten. And I mean, I'm sure Kyle will 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 say it on his own, but um, I can probably say it for him too that. You know, I know for a fact that uh, those conversations that he had with both David and Chris, who are who were complete strangers, he just got on the phone with them. I asked the guys to call him, and they did. And Kyle talked to him. I think they saved his life. I genuinely do. Wow. And that's where that selflessness and that serving others really comes to fruition. So just wow. let that marinate for a little while because that's that's a true story. That's, well, that's what it's all about, man. That that just happened, and I, I say this all the time, but I'm you know I'm very open about my Christian faith, you know that I rediscovered a half dozen years ago, and it, th this entire project is, I, I might be the front man on it, but but I'm not the I'm not the boss. I work for that guy up there, and he's he's got me on a on a project to to save some veterans, and so I'm just a I'm just the water, you know, coming out of the hose, and so. Um, 
yeah, I remember that. That was that was shortly after we filmed in in Warren's. Yeah, I remember you you saying that he, <laughs> he basically outed his PTSD on Facebook outwardly, very openly. He just was like screaming for help. And um, you called me, and I'm like, man, I don't know what. I don't feel qualified, um, you know. But um, and he he openly shared this on his podcast with me. But I mean, he was battling alcohol at the time, and that was that was one of my demons. You know, I didn't. I, I didn't serve our country. I didn't go to war, but I was at war with myself for a lot of years over a bottle. And, and so that was how God wanted to use me to help Kyle. And David was able to speak to the PTSD side of things. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's remarkable. I mean, I said when I started HHA USA, if we can, if we can reach one person, we've succeeded. And I think we've done that countless times over already and we're, yeah. we're we're just getting started and i mean one yeah. more really really cool thing that came about that you'll see in the film i mean uh D david is a born again christian he's got an amazing testimony and i think that's how him and i bonded so quickly um but he he was up here in may for a shoot and then he flew back up in july for another one and he and i were sitting around with one of his other buddies terrence golden that uh that served and then my good friend al quackenbush um who was actually, uh, he's a civilian, but he's got PTSD from being at the, uh, the Route 91 shooting in Vegas. Um, so the four of us were having dinner in Appleton, uh, one of our shoots last summer, and David and I decided, hey, we need a, we need a Bible verse that's going to connect us, that's going to bring the two of us together. And I get, I get goosebumps every time I tell this story, and he pulled one up on his phone, and he showed it to me, and it was Galatians 2.20. But let that sink in for a minute. 22 is right in the in the scripture verse. And it says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So, I mean, you talk about, you can't make that stuff up. You just you can't go. make that stuff up. And I mean, like I said, I didn't serve my country, but I'm serving my veterans, our veterans now. David's doing the same thing. Sam is doing it. And, and there's a lot more of us in this HHA USA family. And it's just, I mean, I can't wait until, I can't wait till May 14th and 15th, because that's going to be a, it's going to be a family reunion of the HHA USA family. And I've already got guys that I haven't met face to face, literally from around the country that are going to be coming in for these shoots this year. And it's just, it's mind blowing to see what God is doing with this ministry. It's basically, it, it's a ministry. It's a ministry. We're we're here to serve our veterans, and and I mean, you talk about God given talent. That that bald guy on the other side of the camera there from down by Milwaukee, Wisconsin, has got <laughs> he's got it going on. Um, if Martin Scorsese could call me tomorrow and want to take over this project, and I would just say, mm, Marty, I'm I'm good. I got my guy. <laughs> oh, Chris, that. Sam, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Make sure you guys check out Chase Nation as well obviously AJJ USA. And I believe this will have already aired when we air this. So we'll put the link below uh, where you guys can find it. I also want to end on just showing this photo that I just got and I keep this, I'm going to put this above my podcast table. When we talk about selfless people, this is the guys going on uh, D day going on the beach for the first time and up in those Hills is where a lot of them met their death from Nazis. And so I just, I, I'm a real big fan of World War II and the sacrifice that people gave to us to be free. So every time I think of something or if I, you know, doubt anything in my life, I always re remember that war and what they went through to make sure we're free, which is very incredible to me and, and a God, you know, a blessing that God gave us. So Tim, any last words? No, man, this has been, uh, well, I guess, yes, cause I'm talking, but uh, it's been a pleasure guys. Um, it really has been. I mean, just to see how this has kind of humbled you guys, change your point of view on, on different things. But I mean, the, the goal of this is to just share it, right? I mean, share it, share the story, share the testimony of these guys that they're that they're making these the, the film around and to get the word out there is all, all they're asking for. So I think we can handle that as a community. And I, I look forward to seeing what you guys have coming next. Yeah, Thank and I'm going to... I'm going to, I'm going to call you guys out on the carpet before we quit recording and you can edit this out if you want, but I would love to see you guys come over to Wisconsin for a shoot this year and bring your, bring your podcast gear with you and see, see one of these things firsthand for yourself and let us, let us 
let some of these veterans share some of their stories on your podcast. I think you guys could make a weekend out of it and, and we'll fill up, we'll fill up a half dozen podcasts with some of these veteran stories for you. If you guys wanted to do a little series on that. So that's just a impromptu. I love it, Chris. Idea. Yeah. So, so sorry to book. I already, ha- I already have that on my plate of something that we need to talk about. So I definitely <laughs> was already thinking that way. Well, now, now your listeners know about it. So now it's got to happen. <laughs> I love it. God. I love it. <laughs> All right. Thanks guys. We'll see you. Thank you guys so much.